What's up, everybody, and welcome to this very special edition of Ragtime. I'm your host, Tommy Russell Jr., and I thought to myself, what better place to do this introduction than here at the Dr. Martin Luther King Memorial here at Kennethon Park in Inglewood? And y'all know I had to wear my Kenny, as always. <laughs> so in this three-part special, you are going to hear from nine very different black women and men, okay, from all across the country, some planning to dismantle racism in the corporate sector, some wanting to burn it all down and start a revolution. Hmm. And some believe it begins with taking a moment to breathe and being mindful of our mental health. The black experience is different for every black person. We are nuanced, we're educated, we're funny and resilient, we're dreamers and innovators, we're human beings. Yet our blackness condemns us to a life where white people can shoot us dead in the street while out for a morning jog for no reason other than our blackness. Or what about the fact that we could be killed in our homes by those sworn to protect and serve us due to piss poor intel? Or maybe it's just a knee to the neck for seven minutes while the world watches yet again as those sworn to protect and serve us stand down and stand by as they watch one of their own commit murder. So. We may all have very different plans for what we think the black agenda is, but we are all very certain that all black lives matter. So without further delay, here is the Catalyst Conversations for the New Renaissance. Hi, what Charlie. up, babe? Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? I love the hair. Thanks. <laughs> I, I it was really long and I cut it because it was getting on my nerves. Um, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do, but that's neither here nor there. You know, um, I love that we both have the <laughs> our our black pieces in the back. <laughs> shorty, in, I love that. I love very that. voluptuous shorty. I love it. I love it. So how have you? How have you? Just a just a quick that you know. How are you? How are you doing in this time? How are you feeling in this moment? Um. I think I have slowly progressed. Um, yeah. I think for a solid like five days to a week, um, I was very avoidant. Um, yeah. Of speaking out, of posting, of, you know, really just even voicing my opinion because I was just exhausted. Yeah. I was very depressed. I was not really leaving my bed. Um, and yeah, I think I, I progressed from being very avoidant to now um participating in my activism virtually yeah um i think i've been doing a better job of posting and doing my part that way and then tomorrow i'll be attending my first protest so really yeah it's gonna be have very you ever have you ever been a protest or ever been to a protest I've never um actually when i think about it um on chapman's campus okay we had um several i think that there was one <laughs> sadly there was yes. one, yeah, sadly. Um, but we had one that was uh, in regards to um, that, like, black white dude that says something to Ari. I forget what it was. Specifically. Wait, is it the one that the guy um, tore down the Black Lives Matter banner? Yes, or whatever? yes, that was it. It was, it was Black History Month. We had the Black Lives Matter sign. Yes, yes. And he told Ari something or she confronted him after yeah it was a whole we all charged we went we ran up on the up. steps <laughs> all pulled up yes so that was the only uh protest that really stuck out to me um, and what changed your done. mind or what 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 like like not i don't know if you've ever like been against or not against but like maybe if you haven't been a protester what made you decide like this time around i want to go out and like you know protest i think it's such a rare opportunity for us to be in this space um, right now and at this time of our lives. It's like, you know, there's so many things that have compounded the pandemic and now yes. it's police brutality. And like, I think that for me to be in the vicinity of the nation's capital, um, True. <laughs> where, you know, all of this movement is actually going to have to turn into, you know, policy um, I think that, yeah, I think to pass up the opportunity, I would definitely regret it. Um, yeah. and I'm, I think I finally worked myself emotionally and mentally into a space where I can physically put myself out there now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that to participate in protesting in DC is just a very rare opportunity. Yeah. That's amazing. 
So. That's what's up. I'm proud of you. That's incredible. The historical feat. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I know you were um, something you had discussed that you wanted to talk about and touch upon was um, the ideas of like, well, one, the fact that I guess your job has not spoken out against any of this behavior from the police, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, and also just about supporting black businesses and uh, cancel culture and how that all affects um, what we're trying to progress and how we're trying to move. So yeah, love for some elaboration on that. So um, I won't get too deep into specifics, but okay. if you've been following me on my story, um, if you follow me at all, I have been um, posting basically the progression of events um, mm -hmm. in regards to my place of employment. So um, I work at a very popular, um, majorly black um black owned oh it's black, black owned. owned it's black owned yes it's oh, a black -owned, i had no idea um and heavily black employed dc nightclub um and there has been some discord amongst staff yeah. and the leadership in the club um essentially the issue is this there was an email sent out um addressing some of our staff who are security, who are also military, mm -hmm. um, who are obviously working throughout the um, protests. Yeah. And there was an email addressing them on account of a manager saying, um, basically pray for y'all while you're out protesting, you know, whether it is that they're tear gassing protesters, shooting them with rubber bullets. There was, yeah. that was, that was acknowledged. So there was an email saying pray for our military um, staff. Mm -hmm. And then there was no acknowledgement of the other staff who are protesting, who are standing up for Black Lives Matter. Right. Right. So there was like a discord and definitely two different messages being sent due to action yeah. and inaction, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this was addressed in a group chat with all of us. And um, Basically, the response that we got was that our our leadership and our ownership um, of our employer did not feel that it was necessary to make a post, to make an acknowledgement of um, what was going on in our country, how it affected us as employees. It was not addressed on a personal level, nor was it addressed on a public level. Um, mind you, our social media page for our club has about 30,000 followers. It Stop. is yes. Um, when business is running as usual, it is very it is like almost on a daily basis that we are posting to promote business and parties and brunches and everything that you know obviously makes the club profit. Yeah, and it's also something that is we as employees are frequently threatened to do is to post. On oh, our really? Y'all are made to post. To post. And to promote, I mean, you see my stories, you know. Yeah, like, I didn't know y'all like, were made to do it. I just thought you did it just because. All of our events, no, it's like something that we're required to do as staff. So for now, the, flip to be, the script to be flipped and to say that social media posting isn't important is obviously a problem. Because 100%. we're a Black-owned business with Black patrons and Black employees. And yeah. now it's not important for you to make a social media post? Great. So... Um, Milan said jigaboo activity. Yeah, click. <laughs> so, um, so basically, you know, zooming out from Park. Um, yeah. I guess the things that are on my mind are these very nuanced problems um, in regards to Black businesses. Yeah. Um, I think that right now we're encountering problems that we have not since faced or before faced, you know, in terms of seeing a split in feelings about supporting black businesses right yeah i think that throughout this whole um disagreement <laughs> yeah. we'll call it um i've seen kind of two sides to the issue it's that um i guess the two sides are we are going to support black businesses regardless of what they do but because they are black right yeah we're going to support black businesses because there are black people yeah and then there's a side that's saying, 
we are not going to mindlessly support black businesses just because they're black, right? Because if okay. those black businesses don't in turn support the black community or their black employers, right? What are we then doing? what it yeah, 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 yeah. I get and you. And if you saw my story a few hours ago, or I don't even know when I posted, um, I just like posted some like bullet points that I think people should be thinking about right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that you know it is it's it's again a nuanced problem. It's really like we don't um, we haven't been presented with these. And if you saw my story a few hours ago, or I don't even know when I posted, um, I just like posted some like bullet points that I think people should be thinking about right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that you know it is it's it's again a nuanced problem. It's really like we don't um, we haven't been presented with these internal black business. Yeah. You know thoughts. Yeah, of, of course. course. Um, because I, I think mean, many yeah, times we just look at black business and we're like, oh, this is a black business. I'm just going right. to support. I think for me, at least, I'm like, oh, it's a black business, black owned business. I'm just going to support because it is that instead right. of really looking at like, how do you help the community? Right. So I think the sentiment before was like, OK, we're going to support this black business because I see black faces. Right. Yes. But yes. now it's like it's being it's being questions like what are the actual internal values and what, are, what is the foundation of this black business? Yeah. And how are they going to support when in times where the support is needed the most? Yeah. Uh, both on an internal level and an external level, right? Because the yeah. whole the whole initiation of the problem was that it wasn't clear that this black business was supporting their staff internally. Yeah. And now it's like the external problem is like, okay, now what are you going to do? What kind of actions are you going to do? How are you going to put this? To action right yeah you're right um so i think for me i've been like so even when we if we get past this mm -hmm. even if you know the public can accept that this business is going to remain it's now a question of how do we move right like how yeah. are we going to support this business are we not because i think also what this is brought into question is like how is business being conducted in this yes. class, right? Yes. So back to my story, you know, the points that I made are like, is there colorism? Mm -hmm. Is this a color, is this a place that conducts business based on my colorist values? Um, is it sexist? Is there homophobia yeah. in this place? Like, yeah. is there any, are there practices that are being discrimin discriminatory towards black people? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if we're really going to support, support Black businesses, they need to be in, for all Black people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Because what are we even really doing if we're, we have Black businesses that are discriminatory within the Black community? Yes, of course. You know? So I, I think do. that, um, and it's crazy because, you know, since that has been um, made public and since those screenshots of those texts have been um, posted, the public has kind of taken over. Yeah. And people who are patrons um, have been commenting heavily, Good. discussing, you know, specific accounts that they've had um, within um, the At, nightclub. Yeah, OK, OK. Yeah. As patrons, um, feeling like they were discriminated against, feeling like really? there was a certain type of Black person that was only welcome mm. there. Um, on account of staff, on account of, you know, the people outside, letting them in, like, okay. a lot of people, as, even as employees, like, at, like, telling them, people telling them that they couldn't be hired because they had this sort of look, or their hair was done a certain way. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, again, I think that this is, like, bringing up a lot of deeper questions about yeah. internal practices within Black businesses. Um, yeah. So, I think those are just... In summary, <laughs> like nuanced yeah. things that we're, we've been pushed to think about during this yeah. time. Yeah. And I, it's been difficult because it's like, I have been very vocal personally about the ways in which the internal practices are very damaging. And yeah. I've been really trying, I've been really reading the comments um, and trying to, and you know, I empathize with a lot of them. And I think of that's course. a really difficult position to be in. 
is, you know, the fact that I, this is my employer. Yeah. And it is a black business and I do really want it to succeed, but I don't want it to succeed at the expense, at the expense of a further promotion of discriminatory black, um, discriminatory practices within the black community. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. So I, I think it's been like something I'm just really trying to um, navigate. And I think a lot of my staff is as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a definitely on a public platform now, um, so That's yeah, tough. it's been a lot. It's been a lot. It's been a lot of like public feedback, but also like communication amongst us. Yeah, um, you know, we all obviously have like our coworkers that we um, more so align with, and then the ones that we don't. So yeah. it's been a little bit of a divide. But um, and I'm not necessarily in the space where I can say that I'm like gun ho about finding a solution. Right. Yeah. And, you know, as an employee, I, I definitely felt like my my concerns weren't initially taken to heart. And yeah. now it's kind of like damage control is being done. Um, yeah. and it feels a little disingenuous. So. I get that. I get that. A hundred percent. I'm just trying to take my time with it. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day it is one employer. Um yeah. It is a massive employer, and they have a lot of influence on the community. Um, so I do hope that something can positive can come of this. But True. at the end of the day, if it's at my expense, I can scoop to the left. That's, so. Yeah, I mean, that's real. Sometimes you got to make those tough decisions. Yeah. Even if the money is right, it's like, but what does it say about my Self values? Self-interest versus, like, Black community overall positive yeah. outcome. Yeah. So yeah, that's, oh, that's where I'm tough. at. Okay. Um, what what been, like, the what's been comprising most of my days is like, yeah. and luckily I mean not luckily but we're in quarantine still mm -hmm. you know we're still so it's like you're not necessarily you don't have to go back just yet anyway right. so it's like you get time to really sit on this and and really figure it out for what you need to figure Carefully it out deliberate and you know at the end of the day like see how everybody moves cause yeah that a huge responsibility has been placed on to the leadership within mm -hmm. my employer's um, staff. So yeah. I think that I'm also just kind of like stepping back. I think everybody knows how I feel at this point. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So I'm not trying to like, you know, continuously like be like this negative um, voice, which is kind of seems like it is, you know, because everybody's like solution weird. oriented right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, no. I'm not, I'm not, not in that space yet. So and I'm kind of just taking a step back and just looking to see what the leadership within um, that staff does. Is going to do, yeah. yeah. Well, can you, before we go, can you let yes. us know your uh, the fundraise or foundation and organi or organization? Yes. Um, I think I copied it. Hopefully yes. I did. Um, mm -hmm. So as it is Breonna Taylor's birthday, the late Breonna Taylor's birthday, mm -hmm. um, rest in peace, she... Yes. Um, there are several links, actually, that, um, depending on what you want to support. So there's a petition that is, I want to say their goal is like 4 million, and there's somewhere okay. in the 3 millions. Okay. Um, that, that is moving very quickly. Um, okay. Obviously, more support, the better. And yeah. quicker, the better. Um, so there's a petition to prosecute her murderers. Um, again, they're like almost at the goal. So there's a link for that. I think okay. this link is the GoFundMe okay. for her family. Um, they've way surpassed their goal. Their goal was pretty humble. It was like $500,000. Oh, wow. It was for a family who's lost a family member. Like, that's basically like life insurance, right? Yeah, so, for sure. Um, but I think they are well over. Oh, shoot. Can I pin it still? Um, just... you, if you comment it, you, um, I can pin it. There you go. Okay, cool. I just commented it, but I can't pin it. Um, thank you. Thank you, Irina. So that's the link for the petition. And then I what is. Pins is the link for the GoFundMe. Um, yeah, as I said, they're way, they're way past their goal. Their goal was like a very humble, like half a million dollars, but if they're at like 300, they're at like 3 million plus, um, dollars, but you know, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm never gonna say it's too much. You know? Yeah, so of course, of course. It's too much. So there are two links now, depending awesome. on how you want to support that family and the cause. 
Um, yeah, I won't get too much into that situation because. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. So. Um, everybody take care of themselves. Like, yes. please just like focus on breathing. It's like, it, this has been very, very taxing. Yes. And it, it's unfortunate that I've also been having to deal with like the personal aspects of the lack of support on account of my black employer who I felt like at this point in time could have used their voice to amplify so many different things. Um, yeah, for sure. And it's kind of just been another burden, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. another thing, police brutality. Now my employer, you know, not really speaking out and now, and then the pandemic, of course. So, um, and we're all dealing with things in our personal life. I'm sure. Of that course. Just like, adding yeah. on to all that is going on in the external yeah. world. So just, yeah. please just take care of yourself. Um, virtual activi activism is a thing. Don't let yeah. anybody tell you that posting is not effective. Like, yeah. there's so many resources and so many pieces of valuable information that are being passed along. So yes, for um, sure. don't let anybody tell you that you can't lay in your bed and participate virtually. Yeah. And also donations and money is actually probably the most effective way to participate in all True. of this. Yeah. Um, like bodies are valid, but you know, money is what's going to move um, policy and whatnot. So. True. True. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Victoria, for hopping on here. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad that you were able to use your voice because it's a very valuable one and we love it. Thank you, Tommy. I yeah, love you. Of course. Stay I love you. Everyone. Yes. All right. I'll talk to you later, babe. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby. What's up, Tommy? How you doing? I'm together. Yeah, you making it? Yeah, I'm making it. Smiling day by day. Yeah. You wanna let's let's pin let's do this first. You wanna pin your um your foundation? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, let's do that first so that it'll be there. Here we go. Ah. So this is their Instagram page and you can awesome. pin that. Cool. Um to check out. Give me the option. Come on now, baby. There we go. Pin comment. Okay. So it'll be down below. You want to just give a brief, um, just who they are? Yeah. So, and this kind of goes into the context of what I wanted to talk about with you. Yeah. Um, so this is a non, a grassroots nonprofit started by a black man to teach um, black boys from low income neighborhoods gymnastics. Yes. Amazing. So that is my organization because I understand that like, a lot of money is going towards the bill out programs towards black lives matter um, which i think is very important but i think that also um, money well spent and valuable funds can go towards these grassroots organizations who are doing the work to bridge the gap as well yeah i actually told a friend about um this organization oh good she was, she was she was like i love this because just the other day I was seeing some black men like do some flips and things. And she was like, I feel like if black men were like in like the Olympics to like do like, you know, gymnastics, smash it. they would smash. Would smash she was, like, it. And I was like, I never thought about that. And she was like, oh yeah, yeah 100%. So I think that's dope. I did gymnastics too as a kid. So I'm like, <gasps> did I, you? Yeah, it was dope. It was fun. It was fun, but I couldn't stay focused. But <laughs> it's, <laughs> that's amazing. I love that you're doing this. So yes. let's talk about, you know, what you want to talk about. You you had a lot of, a couple of things. Um, how can allies continue to support Black people in this movement? What roles do Black people play in continuing the advancements and finding the puzzle pieces to put all this together? So where do you want to start? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, I want to say that um, I know there's been a lot going around about like different forms of activism and how people mm -hmm. choose to be active in these situations. And I'm one of those people that believe that everyone plays a part in it, whether that's yes. posting, whether that's like um, recycling co and collecting information, making mm -hmm. creative infographics for people to digest or growing or going out on the front lines and protesting. So I feel like everybody has a role. Yes. And I think Victoria said it like, don't let anyone and validate that role, yeah. like, it's very important. And so I'm 120 pounds wet, so I don't <laughs> like, <laughs> protesting Period. isn't necessarily Same. my thing, but I don't, like, I don't mind it. Like, I, I feel like it's absolutely necessary because yeah. protesting is like, 
it's like this visceral reaction to what's going on. It's needed. Yeah. It's like, I'm here. It's very like a reactionary thing for people to like start talking. Yeah. Whereas me, I'm trying to think about how can we continue on this movement and this moment that we have and make yeah. sure that we are bridging um, the gap in some way, of e the equity gap in some way. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I think I think that's so true because I, I again that's kind of why this has been started is because like I told you I I didn't know how to use my voice and I'm not a or a, 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 a protester myself I don't go out there and do that that's just me personally however I don't um, think that anybody that does it is like not doing the right thing I think that it's completely necessary like you said um, so we all have to do our own part in that. And I think the, the ways in which you have, you know, you want to discuss and the ways in which um, we've talked a little bit about, I think are very useful. Yeah, I, yeah. So one of the ways that I'm, I'm kind of working for it is working with like nonprofits and mm -hmm. seeing what they, cause like they're, so for example, Mike Jordan or like the Jordan Foundation just donated a hundred million dollars to um, racial injustice. Really? And so, yeah. And Mike Jordan is really... in Michael Jordan, the basketball player, or Michael? Yeah, B. yeah, Jordan? yeah. Okay. No, okay. no. Got you. I got you. <laughs> what he doing? Look, look <laughs> what are he doing? Um, before he get canceled next, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so the Jordan Foundation. Um, I mean, black people spend so much money on that. But anyways, um, yeah. <laughs> it's like they just donated $100 million over the span of 10 years towards racial injustice. But it's like, oh, wow. first, what does the Jordan Foundation categorize as racial injustice? And secondly, mm -hmm. where are you going to, how are you going to disperse these funds over the 10 years? And so True. oftentimes when these funds are being distributed, they're going to um, big one, wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I don't think he got the money or the range. <laughs> but love him, boots down. Um, so when this money is being distributed, um, it's going to like these big established organizations already, i.e. the Black Lives Matter movement, completely yeah. understand. However, who is oftentimes counted out is the, non the grassroots nonprofits that are started by Black people in their own community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have somebody like in Atlanta raising expectations who helps bridge the gap between post-secondary education um, for students of color and it's like yeah. they can't even get the funding to do what they need to do because nobody is supporting them um, financially because they're not a big organization, organization. So, and so that's where we look at found th this foundation with Michael Jordan as far as like are though is that where your money is going to go towards those types of things is, is right. that correct? Yeah. Right. But nine times out of 10, like, it's not. It's going to go to a bigger organization because, like, and this gets down to it, like, they really do not trust Black people with the money. They would rather give, like, a white organization that is, like, going into Black neighborhoods yeah. the money because they feel like it's more genuine. Like, oh, my gosh, this white person is going to this neighborhood. They must really want to help versus, right. like... I grew up in this. I started this nonprofit because of this. Yeah. You can trust me with the funds. Like I'm Which not. Which sounds to do... almost. It, it almost sounds like I don't. I'm, I'm not going to necessarily necessarily say a slave mentality, but it's almost like the white man knows what to do with the money. But you know, like you said, the white man knows what to do with it, and it's like, really, the white man is also the same one that's doing okay, uh -huh. all this. You mm -hmm, know, so mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm, what? Mm -hmm. Like that's 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 funky. That's messed up. Yeah, okay. so that's why I'm trying to figure out, like, I'm trying to, so as a creative, like, getting yeah. on this note, like, my part and how I'm playing in it, like, I'm a creative, I'm someone that has a platform, I have a blog, mm -hmm. where I can compile these lists of Black-owned businesses, compile these lists of nonprofit organizations that people yes. can donate to and start and, like, give reviews on them, just, like, making one, like, centralized place for people to reach these resources yeah. quicker to help them to some capacity. Like, yeah. at my job, um, like, my job made a statement, but also I'm, partner I'm partnering with a nonprofit back at home so that my job can give them free data to help them get sponsorship. Oh, oh that's awesome. Cause I'm like, what are y'all doing? Okay, yeah. yes, you can make a statement, but like, I need you to do something else. So pro yes, bono, 100%. this data that's worth $50,000, $100,000 yeah, like, that we give to a client, ain't cheap, baby. Yeah, yeah, they ain't cheap. cheap. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, we're gonna go in and we're gonna help these nonprofits awesome. with data, however they use data, however they need us to like analyze something for them to. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> Somebody called yeah. me. <laughs> put my phone on. It's like now that you're saying, now disturbed. that that happened, I um, need to put my phone on. Did not disturb. So thank you. <laughs> Oop! They called again. They called again. Called again. I don't know what. I don't know why they keep calling me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I'm trying to find ways to that point of okay. helping grassroots nonprofits in, in Atlanta specifically because that's where I'm from. Yeah, of course. I think that that's a big, I know the foundation that I chose is it centralized in Texas. And so it, it's like, I want, although we want it everywhere, it's like we all come from so many different parts of the, you know, of, of the world, of the country. And so it's kind of like, I want to go back home where I felt like I was neglected and, you know, in certain aspects of, of things. And so it's like, let me give back to that. So that's amazing that you're doing that. So absolutely. what was, I know, uh -oh, where'd it go? Um, you said, so uh, how do allies continue to support? I know that's one of the ways as far as like your company, but how do we say with our common everyday ally um, that doesn't necessarily have $50,000? or a, a large platform, what would you recommend? Right, so with those types of things, I mean, there is a lot of discourse around like not, I don't wanna say begging, but like not begging white people to like learn about these issues. Like they either wanna learn about it or they don't. Like yeah. you see all these documents where they're compiling these lists of things to read, stuff to watch. And a lot of people are like, why are y'all begging them to like educate themselves? Like let them yeah. do it on their own. Yeah. I completely agree. However, comma, there are some people who need like they just need like some some type of context to it. I feel like they have the framework for it. Yeah. So I, I give a lot of grace in the sense where I would um, like I feel like allies can continue reading these texts or either having these conversations and continuing to educate themselves in some sort of capacity to um, support us. And then also like speaking up when you see obviously this is an uncomfortable situation like yes. whether that's in the work environment whether that's in the everyday environment um i think is really important yes a hundred percent because you're you're exactly right when i i think that's almost for me the main place where allyship is most necessary is when you're sitting in these rooms with people who are having conversations and they say problematic stuff and you feel like, ooh, I think that was messed up, but like, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to rock the boat. Rock the boat, baby. Shake it up. <laughs> Turn that motherfucker over. And do what you gotta do. And, and I, I understand, and it's this sad part. It's this understanding that like, nobody wants to lose their job. And I also understand that as an ally, as a non-Black person, it becomes this point of like, am I, Am I losing, like, I would be willing to lose my job because I'm a Black person, and thus I'm like, this directly affects me. So if you feel this kind of way, then I can go. Goodbye. But I feel like for white people, it's not as connected to them. So it's a little harder for them to make that decision. And I can understand that this might be your dream job that you've worked all your life to get. And mm -hmm. thus you've now entered this space and you didn't realize, oh, this shit is funky. But it's like, Maybe you don't have to necessarily, you know, shake that bad boy, but you can, you can speak, you can speak, you can use your voice in a very educated way, just as the same way you were able to finesse that job interview to get that job. You know how to use your language, you know how to use your words to speak up and, and say something in a way that it may not come across as, a, as maybe aggressive, but like you can say something to be like, eh, hey, no, I don't, uh, maybe you shouldn't say that. Like, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. It could be as simple as that. Absolutely. And even like them taking initiatives, like, first of all, it's a lot. It's a lot for me to like go to them and say like, hey, can you speak about this? But one yeah. thing that people have been doing at my job, like one of the VPs, um, um, she's white passing who is Hispanic. And she was mm -hmm. like, you know, I want to send this email. You know, do you mind just like looking at it and giving me the stamp of approval? Because I just think something needs to be said. And I was like, yeah, girl, like, you can definitely send it. Because if I would have said that, they would have been like, yeah, oh, they would have been very like, oh, my gosh. Like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. So I'm happy that, you know, she was like, you know, That's I don't good. do this. And then some people even reached out and was like, hey, like, I know this is a hard time. I will take on your parts of the work 
and yeah. just let you, you know, get some rest or whatever you need to do to um, get some peace right now. Which is awesome. That is definitely, that, those are definitely ways in which, you know, help is necessary because you're exhausted. Everybody is exhausted that has, you know, people of color at least are mm-hmm. exhausted. We're tired and it, it makes it no better that we're sitting at home. And we can't ignore it, even though we already can't ignore it because we we live it every day. So it's like, yeah, I'm tired. I need a time out. I need a break. So that's, you know, so how do you feel? Because I know you also said here, um, uh, continuing to support Black people beyond this movement. How how do Black people play in that role as well? How do you feel like Black people can do their part? Yeah, so going back to what I was saying about finding nonprofits in their community and supporting them because like although right now this movement is about police brutality it's also about systemic racism and there are a lot of buckets to systemic racism whether that's like like economic inequality that gap whether that's like education the educational gap between black people and their counterparts it's just so many different variables that play into systemic racism that yes. like there are nonprofits for each of those and yeah. like looking at your community and finding out how you can help them whether that's going to their meetings monthly donating to them monthly finding out how your job may can help them or how you yes. as a creative could help that um, nonprofit get their message out even more so if you make videos like on YouTube or something like saying, hey, do you need somebody to come in and film this day for y'all and I can edit it so you can use it as promotional material. It's just, it's so many ways that you can use like your voice and your creative direction. Even if like, we all have a part to play um, in this. And I think black people continuing to support that is important. And then also voting. Now I don't want to get all into the voting thing. (laughs) <laughs> I, it's, jump, 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 jump. We're in a tough would, spot right now. We're in a we're tough in spot, spot. <laughs> baby. Um, <laughs> with voting, that's a different story. I, I think yeah. it is important. I think voting is definitely important. I know a lot of people feel like their vote doesn't count, but in some capacity, it does. But I also realize the variables like voter suppression that keeps people away from voting and making them feel like their vote does not count. But I feel like there's a certain demographic, um, a certain generation of Black people that um, can do their part in organizing how to vote, um, what's on the ballot. Because I'm not going to lie, when I first got my absentee ballot, I was reading over them laws and I was like, what the (laughs) hell? I ain't never heard of none of this. I, and so I can only imagine my mama yes. going inside of the the voting booth and trying yes. to like figure out what the hell that means. In that moment, yeah, oh yeah. In that, oh, yeah. Moment, in that moment, a bitch would be playing any mini money mo at that point. <laughs> Period. <laughs> any mini because <laughs> so, I've been I've been in misinformed or I have been uninformed due to my own lack of you know searching and been in a voting booth and I'm like that name looks black maybe I hope I'm picking you know I'm like I'm just. I'm like, ah, what am I doing? I only literally went for, I only know the top thing. So I'm like, yeah. And even if their name look black, they don't mean they for black people. So it's true black. that. That but, part. But <laughs> what I'm finding though, that there, there are some organizations that educate you about like what policies are currently on the ballot, what yeah. candidates are there, and they break them down in simpler terms. Like I think Portia from Real Housewives is getting on live tonight to discuss some of the, um, the DAs or the prosecutors that's like on the ballot for really? Georgia. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So that's, th- awesome. that's like one way to bridge the gap because people yeah. honestly don't know. Like, so I think voting is important, but there's a non going back to nonprofits and grassroots yeah. nonprofits specifically. Yeah. Hello, fuck around and vote for Ben Carson. Come on. <laughs> and it's like, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. Stay some dad. That's not the one. That's, that's funny. Damn, I'm a Rosa. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we're just going to get anybody at this point. Shit. Oh, um, we... Trina. <laughs> Shatana. <laughs> Who we going to get? We're gonna get oh, Trina. I didn't know gone. Trina was fronting like she was Latina, la- girl. Trina is running for the mayor of Florida. Oh, we're we gonna get her on the ballot. Oh my um, goodness! Oh, my but goodness. <laughs> see, I'm happy that we can make light of like such a heavy yeah, time. Um, of course, 
Because that's what we have to, I mean, I feel like that's what we as Black people have always been forced to do is like, we could sit here and be down all the time. Or in some ways, we can laugh at the very cruelty that we're going through. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, 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 yeah, I mean, we got to do what we got to do. We got to do what yeah. we got to do to stay alive and stay happy and mentally sane. Absolutely. You know, so I'm glad you got that little bit of rainfall yesterday that put your mind in the rain. Oh my stuff. gosh, I needed it. I absolutely needed it. Um, yeah. but <laughs> just as just as like wrapping it up, um, yes. I honestly though I've enjoyed the conversations I've been able to have with my friends um, awesome. about what's going on, um, and then also what it's done for me as a creative to see how I could use my platform. I mean, I already use it. You know, I do like that Black yeah. History Month, like Black-owned businesses. I'm always yeah. doing that, but like how I can amplify that times 10. Um, so I'm really, really happy that like this movement yeah i'm not happy for what has happened but i'm happy for this movement yeah um and work and then finding these nonprofits. i think y'all if y'all have taken anything from me it's find a nonprofit that speaks to some sort of issue affecting black people and yeah. help them in some capacity that you can that's yeah. my tuesday and i want to and i just want to add real quick before you go it i really obviously love our friendship because you are one of my very few gay friends and gay right. black friends at that you know what i'm saying so it, it's so good to like because at the at the end of the day not only is this you know the face of this sometimes can just be trumped with like black men yes. but we don't recognize that there's trans people people uh, no, uh non-gender conforming you know women that are dealing with the same you know oppression and the same things and even even more, you know, doubly as, you know, in some cases, you know, the fact that you could be a woman and Black or gay and Black or trans and Black, you know, is like, you know, on there. So it's like, it's always great to have these conversations with you because we don't get to see many of us in these pla in these places and in these spaces. And so, you know, I, I always look up to we, you. We are in these places, in these spaces, but we are not recognized. Recognized, yes. Oh, so, yes. Women, queer people have always been on the front line That's real. doing the work yes. of these people. However, yes. what's the face of it has been the cisgendered heterosexual male. Yes. And you know, yes. that is misogyny at its finest. Yes. Um, that's why I'm going to continue to do the work that I'm, I'm doing. Yeah. So you're looking at a boss right here. I, I look you're up looking to you at so, so much. I look up to you so much. And look, I got this shirt on. I, I put on my hoodie because I look so rough, but it's a shirt that say black women on it. Come on. But you know, I've always supported black women before. Period. You know, this little Period. trend that's happening. Yeah. I've been down for it. It's something I just ordered. I've been had it. So. Been had it. Been on been had it. Happy <laughs> birthday, Brianna. You Come already on, know. Happy birthday. Yes, exactly. Happy so. birthday. Well, I love you, Basil. I'm so I glad you got to come on. Thank you so yes, much absolutely. for this. And yes. uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye. What up? Get my girl go. How you doing, boo? I'm hot. <laughs> I'm just watching you fan yourself. I'm hot as hell. You know, <laughs> I'm hot. I'm like, I don't know if it's the topic, if it's just that I'm hot, if it's just, I'm like. Yeah. Eat it, period. It's all of it. It's all of it. How are you doing? How have you, how have you been dealing with everything? Um, I smoke a lot of weed, always. Period. <laughs> as calm as I could possibly be. Um, yeah. Trying to smoke while also like taking a break from smoking because like I don't want to spend my whole day smoking. It's not the most right. productive. But I'm also <laughs> if you need to smoke, just take that hit real quick. So. But you know something funny enough since I've known you, you have been like one of the most productive, like productive, working like I don't want to use pothead, but like smokers that I. <laughs> that's the word. <laughs> It's fine, and that's not a bad term or an ugly term or anything like no, that. I don't think I don't think so, especially in the context of using it with you. I'm like, no, she's on her stuff now. There's a difference. Yeah, bring me like down from ten to like seven. Yeah. <laughs> really so, helpful. But like, I don't want to spend my whole time smoking because it also depresses you, and like this shit is already so that I don't want to just smoke all the time because it, it doesn't always make you feel better. Sometimes it just makes you think harder about all the shit that's fucked up in the world. Yes, so, like, very not true. 
it's not always the most conducive. Because when I watched when I watched Ozark High, my anxiety was like, <laughs> I was like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna? <laughs> it just raises my anxiety. So I definitely yeah. know at a time like this where it's real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's um, like a thing I'm doing just for like the black women I love that have I can see them getting stressed out, and I know that they smoke. I've just been sending them seventy five dollars. I'm like, go buy yourself some weed from me to you. <laughs> You a real one. You a real one. Smoke something, treat yourself, buy an edible, like Aspen said, something just to like make yourself feel better, just to escape if you can. So that's the real. See, you the real one. I'm just saying, love it. I love it. So while we're while we're here, while we got this little bit of time, um, I know there's a couple things that you wanted to speak about. Um, one of them, you said you wanted to speak on how white people, white folks need to be showing up right now. Um, in what ways do you feel um, like they should be showing up? And I also ask, how do they show up and not become performative how, without it feeling performative? Because in many ways, I feel like I'm seeing people come out the woodworks that I've never heard say anything before. And it's like, are you doing this because you care or because you don't want to look racist? Absolutely. And I mean, that obviously is a part of it for some people. And I've had a lot of smart people ask me, like white people, like, how do I show up and it not be inauthentic? I think number one is that everything that could be said and is being said right now has probably already been said by a black woman or a black queer person already. Like, we've already said this shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. all you when you're there is either amplify what we've already said, amplify the resources that you can help to support us. But like, um, I was talking to my friends about how a lot of white people are coming out with statements like, I didn't know what to say. Like, it's been so hard for me to find the words. Like, you don't you don't need to find new words. Like, no one's really asking y'all to say anything about this. Mm -hmm. black, women, black people have said plenty on this already. There's all types of shit all over the internet to just find what we've said and amplify our voices. Don't talk over us. Don't speak yeah. for us. Um, we have opinions thoughts. Black people have been thinkers for hundreds of years in this country, and there's evidence of that in writing. So you yeah. have, um, do that. And instead of taking up space, step back, listen, um, and absorb. And if you feel like you can support in different ways, then find those. But most importantly, just be quiet until yeah. you feel like you've heard what you need to say. I just, especially for white people, I think they're really used to having a voice wherever they go um, and not having to like listen first and then respond later. So yeah. I think listening is something that every ally needs to uh, practice, along with just like the guilt and uncomfortability that comes along with this type of thing. Yeah. You need to be able to work through that and not bring it up. I don't want to hear about like, oh, well, my uncle's so racist. This isn't the right time. Don't, yeah. don't talk about yourself. Don't talk about your family. Don't talk about what you see from your friends. All you need to do here is amplify what Black people are saying. Support yes. people. Donate to Black people. Check in on Black people. But Black people should be the center of this and not yeah. white people. And white people have a really hard time not centering themselves and their own issues. They're like, I can relate because like, no, you can't relate on racism. No, Here. not at all. Not at all. Okay. And how do you... How do you say with the reaching out? Because I think all of us have been bombarded with right. reach, reach outs and people coming out the woodwork. How do you suggest a, a white person come to a black person without it feeling like, oh, I have sympathy or like, you know, like, right. oh my God, I, I, I didn't know or whatever like they come up with. Like, what do you think the best way could be? A better way I rather. First of all, I think you should check in on your black friends, not just like random black people who you have like tangentially met once or twice, yeah. like random white people who I'm cool with, but like don't know like that, who are hitting me up like, I just want to check on you. I want to see how you're feeling. Like, I mean, I wouldn't tell you about my feelings regardless. It's not yeah. like, I mean, like I would never share. Have I ever shared my feelings with you? Then yes. I'm not about systemic racism and police brutality. I don't have time. I don't want to. You know what I mean? So I yes. think it's Check in on your black friends. If you don't have black friends, you should figure out why you don't have any black people in your life to actually genuinely check in on. If you're only yeah. hitting that you kind of know, like you had two classes with this black person, why don't why are there no black people in your real life and not just in your social media life? You know what I mean? Yes. So I, yes. I genuine white friends check in on me. I have plenty of shit for them to say. If someone I've talked to maybe five times in the past two years asked how I'm doing, to you I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Right. Right. I'm not going to share my intimate, and I'm an open book, and still I'm not going to share all that shit with you, my personal feelings. Um, 
And also just put your money where your mouth is. If there are black women and black queer people who you feel like educate you and like really put you on a wave, like send them $15, send them $20. Mm -hmm. Y'all can really use the privilege that you have as people who can acquire wealth to send us some money. That's yeah. so good. Money makes me feel good. I'm sorry, this yeah. is a cap world. If you want to <laughs> support a black person, you could send them some money. Because I mean, how many, we went to a PWI, how they were spending money on everything, anything, they didn't care. So like, if you toss some money, Toss it. Toss it. I, and I mean, <laughs> in the capitalist world, people have a really hard time of letting go of their money, which is why, like I said, I just give it away sometimes. Like, yeah. I have, you could take it because I don't need it. And I will give it to black women and black people who I know are out here emotionally exhausting themselves, pushing themselves past their own comfortability. Um, but yeah, if you're, don't check in on people that you don't actually know. That's actually disingenuous as fuck. Yeah. How and real, you? real quick, when we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. With um, before we we uh, even move on, can you link your your um, your organization in here while we're talking? Yes, 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 yes. Give me. I just. Yeah, of course. I should have started off. But did somebody call you? No, I'm just bad with phones. Like I'm 45. Okay. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So it's Tim there. You want to just give a little rundown about what the organi who the organization is? Yeah. So um, Warriors in the Garden is Chi, Uma, Ose, and some other people who, um, one of them went to Chapman, their yep. brother work, um, and they are actively out in these streets protesting, engaging, sharing live things. So I really want people, um, I feel like a lot of organizations like EJI and things like that are getting a lot of love. And I yeah. really want people on the ground right now um, who need to bail themselves out, who need those resources, who might need to use a bathroom or whatever, we should be yeah. giving so I see what those folks are doing, and I really want people to support them, especially because he went to Chapman. And exactly. A black person, and I, I feel like, I don't want to say proud of him, but humbled by the work that she and others are doing. So. Yeah, and I didn't even know about it until you, you know, made me aware of it. So it's definitely added to the other list. I'm definitely going to have to chunk that up because I, I feel like this is a time also where it's like that alumni feeling of like, you know, like the we went to school together like alone like you just say chapman and like here you go i got you chapman was a time like i feel like for people who got woke in college or whatever that was a time where they were organizing and doing the most but everyone's journey of figuring this shit out and wanting to be an activist or whatever is different it comes at different times yeah. uh for being in college being a lot more critical of people and what they were doing and or not doing as a black person a lot yeah. less I am now I'm like or you could just show up and be a person and that's okay yeah. too because you don't have to come and show labor so it's it's great to see like people just like showing up and like really out here in these streets and so I'm like I said just humbled by the work that she and Shuma and other people are doing because it's great 100 percent. that's awesome um okay so there was another topic which you know is something that me and Basil kind of touched on a little bit towards yeah. the end of ours but um I'd love to talk about as well which is Specif uh, specifically women and queer folks and having being on the front line for the longest yeah. and having to deal with this and our voices being amplified and being protected. Like, how, what do you feel about that? How's that for you? I mean, for me right now, as a black woman, I don't really feel like going outside at all. Like, that's just how I feel right now. I feel yeah. like I've gotten focused a lot. I've, I've been doing what I can in the past. And right now I'm just like not in the mood. And I feel like black women historically and black queer folk historically have shown up and been out here doing the work. And I think all of these years later that black women have to be the forefront, not that like we take on that role, but like that yeah. we the most. I think yeah. that they can take a seat, like a, a back seat while also still having a voice and like still having the power to guide this movement. Like, I think it sucks that it's always black women and black queer folks who it, within our own communities are given the least light. And yeah. the least, just like you and Basil were saying, um, I think it's time that other people showed up, especially white women, especially white men, especially like white queer folks, because they always have time to protest yes. for themselves. Always have time to be like, I love black women. I am a black woman. Yeah. Like, all that, then you can show up and protect black women. You can amplify their voices. You have to talk over black women all the time. I think I'm just over the performative, kind of like Basha was saying, the love that black women get. Uh, yes. And you can do that so we don't have to. I mean, there's just a lot of instances. Obviously, Breonna Taylor is one. But even in these protests, black women having their children aborted, their babies aborted, black women dying. Like, these are the, like, black women face police brutality exactly like black men face it, plus worse. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think it's that I don't want.
want to be out on these streets right now. Like, I'm honestly tired. I just want to smoke. I just want to relax. I'm obsessed. I'm, I'm stressed. And I don't want to do it. And I think it's great right now that pe other people are stepping up and taking over. I think I have a lot of great friends who know, like, Imani's tired. Imani does enough. I'm going to take this off her plate right now. I'm going to do yeah. less. I'm going to do more so Imani can do less. And that's how I feel like you can show up. If you know that I do a lot of work, if you know who I am, you know, I spend a lot of time being angry and doing a lot of <laughs> stupid bullshit to make a point. So if you know me and you love me, then there are ways that you can be like, I'll do work so people like Imani can do less. Um, yes. Great. That's, that's great. And you know, you know, something I was thinking about was in my life, I, I've been very fortunate enough to have amazing black women in my life. First of all, I think that uh, when I look at the friend group that I have, it's, uh, it's yeah. always just me being surrounded around strong black yeah. women. But Absolutely. the fact that those black women have always been the ones to fight for me. Right. And I've always had to fight for them as well, because it's like, though I can, I can, I can honestly say that I've never had a, a, a black female friend who has not challenged their man to make sure that it, they're like, if, if he's homophobic, we're not in it. You know oh, what I mean? No, I think, even, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Even when I started dating my boyfriend, and this is like a really obtrusive question I asked him, in the first like maybe two weeks we were dating, I was like, would you ever date a trans woman? And he was like, I don't, I never thought about that. I don't think so. And I was like, well, why not? He was like, well, I, uh, I was like, well, why don't, why aren't trans women considered? Because I mean, black trans women are the most at risk women in yeah. our community. Yeah. If your mom want to break down with you, why your transphobia internalized, like not even outward transphobia, like we've never talked about trans women, but what do you, how do you feel about them? Um, yeah. I have to I'm going to protect my black trans sisters, my black queer community. Like that's all work that has to be done. And yeah. I think black women are okay with being the aggressor or okay with being like, you know, the person who brings up uncomfortable topics. Because once again, if, if black women can do it, why can't you? Why can't you show up? You know yeah. what I mean? Um, me and my boyfriend talked about uh. that. I think that months later he was like, I had that conversation with all of my friends and now we've been talking about it. Like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. That's y'all are the ones who perpetrate the most violence against black trans women. And y'all need to have these conversations. You need to break that shit down. You need to do that work. Um, and you need to, why well, stop? No, I stop. <laughs> keep going. No, keep going. You're good. You're good. It's <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't you dare. Oh, uh, I have. I haven't broke yet. I haven't okay. broke yet. It's, it's just, yeah, no, that's real. No, that's very, because we, it's, uh, it's tough. It's so tough to be, I can only imagine being a trans person of color. And it's just like, in that LGBTQ community is the plus community. It's just like, we already have to deal with the fact that we're going with through that. And like, to then be black on top of that and then not even finding support within our own community. And I'm just, I'm just so, I'm just so grateful to have friends like you and, and other friends who are very supportive. And I'm not saying that I don't have friends that aren't black women that don't, that support me or don't support me, but it's, the con the constant has always been black women and i'm just it's eternally grateful for it and just the again the 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 anger and the strength that y'all have and it sucks because y'all get shitted on so yeah. fucking much y'all get yeah. shitted on so much and it pisses me off it really pisses me off because y'all don't deserve that you really don't just because you're the only ones that are brave enough to speak up and say something like it's not fair it's just not fair at all and i'm just so grateful i'm black so people, grateful there are cousins there are sisters like black women recognize black people as our you know what i mean i'm like i'm gonna stop for any black man on the street like he was my fucking brother any day i think black women just have that loyalty to each other like you really see everyone as family yeah. oh, i have these boxes here because i watch love island and I just randomly cry sometimes, so they came in that in handy just now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, no. okay. It's a cry. I feel like I'm right. saying, I'm saying, crying feels like taking a shit. Like it just makes you feel better. <laughs> it does. So it like, does. Like, the cry. It's like I could spend five days not crying, and, and throughout those five days, all I really wanted to do was cry. So yeah, it just 
just cry or take a shit, whatever you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> One of them. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so I know you. I know you said um, within that you wanted to touch on history and political yeah. education are important with us as well, but especially for white folks specifically who have been taught about us in school and media as slaves and thugs, rappers and basketball players. Um, yeah, Let, um, how do you want to talk, yeah. tackle that or talk about that? Yeah, so I mean, I think going to Chapman, I was a history major with a poli-sci minor, which first of all, really depressed me and made me really sad because yeah. I got that I had never known about, things that had really been a part of my life as a Black person um, and my identity here in this country, and I never had access to them. So yeah. I am a huge like, proponent of like history education, especially in this country. You cannot know American history without knowing racial history, without knowing like the, the, like, the history of slavery more deeply than just like, oh, slaves started here, like capitalism. All yeah. the so what I try to do, a lot of people want white people to go find resources, and I'm all for that. But white people just like look for, they don't know what they're looking for. A lot of us don't know what we're looking for. So yeah. I have been posting articles that I think would be helpful to people. Just so even if you do have a good idea of like what you can do or like what you can read, like here are actual things that black people have written that are about black history that are yeah. about 300 years ago and they're about today. Um, I think those things are really helpful because maybe reading that one article about police brutality or about slave patrols will help you. If you care, that will mean yeah. you're going to go. You know what I mean? So even planting those small seeds so people can have more access to this kind of history education to me is so, so important because yes. if all you read is like 12 years, see 12 years of slave and read the book and, you know, just depressing shit about slavery and you don't know anything else about black people. All you know is that Black Panthers were evil and bullshit like that. You will never yeah. be black people. And our history education to me is purposely, purposely propagandized so that we never learn anything about how the Black Panther Party was useful to the black community. A hundred percent. That they purposely infiltrated it and took it down. You know what 100%. I mean? So, or, and people don't even know that they don't know that stuff. And I know that they don't know. So I would happily spend my time just planting those seeds so people can do that reading. And if they care, they'll do some more research. So that's yeah, a big 100%. thing for me. I, you know, I didn't, I, like I was saying, I think it was, was with Victoria or before that was just like, yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't have that, you know, that education. That's all I saw us as black people oh. as, and it was sad yeah. because like, I was almost on the team of white people. Cause I was just like, yeah, black people just don't got it together. And like, oh, they can, they can move up and not realizing. And Basil had to educate me on this, my economic privilege because I was thinking of it as like black privilege but he was like think of yeah. it more so as like economic privilege like my mom was a commander in the navy I was it, you know I was in rooms that like you don't see black black people at you know my mom was asked to be one of the first black female um heads of like a marine camp and base and like do stuff like that and so being in those spaces, I felt this privilege and I didn't really understand why other people, Absolutely. other black people weren't at that same level. And yeah. it wasn't until I went to an HBCU and had a black professor, many black professors, but a black <laughs> professor teach me African-American yeah. studies and really was, you know, on it where I was like, oh, like, oh. It's and one of the one of my like last semesters of Chapman, like I basically had like a breakdown because I was in a South African history class that was literally about black, like literally about black people. You could not be yeah. any more black people than South African history. And within this class, some girl was doing like a presentation, and she said some like she said like she couldn't pronounce the South African person's last name, uh -huh. and she called him John. And everyone in the class started laughing, and I was like, or you could pronounce his name. Yeah. My name is Imani. If you couldn't pronounce it, would you give up? Would you stop? Would you just throw your hands up? And yeah, so I think and call me Sarah. Showing up and having the education, but respecting it. You know what yeah. I mean? And effort into it. Uh, I think all of those things make a more informed person in general, but especially a more like informed ally. If you're going to show up and take up space in these places, if you understood the racial history of this country, you would take up less space. Yes. Uh, and, like having that knowledge and understanding of things just go so far. A hundred percent. Somebody had to. <laughs> awesome. Yes, yes, I I agree with you on all of those all of those fronts. I agree. 
Well, I know we I know we got to get to the next person. I know. But I, I thank you so much. I love you. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay. Bye, friends. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>